Then go. For our presentation, we're obviously filming. We are doing different techniques of mixing and cutting. Exhibit A, we have the carrot but that we're going to be using in our demonstration. And before you cut, obviously wash it, but we also get out cutting board. Put the cutting board down, like so. Now, more than likely you're going to want to peel the carrot. So we use a vegetable peeler. Now you can you don't have to use this on vegetables, you know, like carrots, potatoes, and stuff like that. You can also use it on fruits like pears, watermelon, apples, apples and stuff like that. Demonstration, shall we? Follow me to the trash can. Okay. Now this is a nice one. Has a nice grip. Just take it. Give a little bit of pressure and let the blade in it do the work. It'll also help to have a good grip on the carrot. Done. Okay, well, for our demonstration, we won't peel it all the way just enough so you guys get the idea. Okay, vegetable peeler done. We'll set it over here. Okay. Now we gotta choose which knife we want. We got, first of all, a paring knife. Good for a small stuff, you know, like snipping and stuff. Small blade, nice and sharp, rubber handle, pretty good. Then we got a boning knife. Serrated edge, good for like cutting meats and stuff like that. Kind of like a steak knife. Now this is a double tap. We got two different kind of chef's knives. We got the straight blade and a grooved blade. Grooved blade makes it easier to get the food off and whatnot. And this one, it mainly sticks. Either one is okay. We got the butcher knife. Nice long blade. You don't really gotta work much, but again, up to you when we get to it. We got a bread knife. Serrated edge for like sawing. Then we have my personal favorite the meat cleaver. Now, Here's the question, which one do we use? Well, if you're me, and I know you're not, or Nathan, we would more than likely use the cleaver, but things would be going over. But since we see scents, we don't use this. This is mainly for taking big slabs of meat and turning into smaller slabs. The bread knife. Yeah, it has a nice serrated edge, you no know, grooves and whatnot, but this is mainly for breads. You use a saw motion to cut through it, it goes by easier. The butcher knife is mainly taken after the cleaver for taking those smaller hunks of meat and turning them into even smaller, you know, like cutting out steaks. You could use either one of these, mainly for like chopping and whatnot, so we'll put them there. This steak knife, no. Then you got the paring knife, which can be used. Okay, you can take it, snip it. Okay, now you can use either. Do some safety stuff too. I will. When you go to use, use it. I'll even use a paring knife for it. You don't want to play chicken, all right? Don't go like that. Go some. Use your knuckles as a guide, all right? See how that works? And it goes same thing with chef's knife. Let's see. 
seeing how they don't stick to the blade much. Okay, since we got three knives taken down, each one will work. So now we got our carrot chopped up. Let's go move on to something different, shall we? Okay, we got a knife sharpener. Classic handheld one. Alright. Take one, put a knife in about 20 degrees and you pull it back make sure you get the whole tip of the, up to the tip of the blade and you go through it on each side to make sure it's nice and sharp and you go through it evenly on each side and then you go to the other side and do it evenly one's more coarse than the other all right already has a good edge to it Nice thing about these ones, price. Doesn't range all that high. Then you get the electric one, which is a lot nicer. And let's go plug it in. So you get it plugged in. And you flip it on. Alright, put it in. for the tip of the blade. Alright, then you go through on the other side. Alright, now once you get it sharp enough to the point, then you can take, well, wipe it off obviously, now, for Time's sake, I just decided to wipe it off on my jeans. Then you take the steel. You place the knife at about a 20 degree angle and just start going. Basically puts a nice finish to it. it makes the edge stay. And a good way to check to see if it's sharp enough is take it to a piece of paper and with one stroke you should be able to cut through it. Safety. We'll go back to Mr. Carrot. Mr. Carrot doesn't like his job. Well, too bad. He for a demo. Alright? Now, like we said, don't go like that. That's playing chicken. Um, you always, when you're walking around with it, unless it's like from the drawer, like that, grab it by the handle. But if you're going to be walking around with it, it's probably a good idea to leave it like that. So that if you fall, you don't stab into your chest, it'll go into the floor, more than likely. It won't hurt anyone. Another thing with the bread knife, you don't take this to one of these. You will turn into a regular knife. This is a sense is used for breads, bagels, and whatnot. There's a special sharpener for it, which we don't have. And another thing, you don't start jabbing it at people or cutting each other heads off with a cleaver. Only me and Nathan are allowed to do that. Because we're part of the cleaver gang. Um, okay, since we got the knives done, let's go to the measuring cups. We got the quarter cup, the third cup, the half cup, the whole cup, and these, nice thing about them, you can stack them. These are the dry measuring cups. You use these for flour, sugar, or other solidified items. Then you got your spoons. You got the quarter teaspoon, the half teaspoon, the one teaspoon, and then you got the tablespoon. These can be used for both liquid and dry. Then you have the one cup and the two cup liquid measuring cups. This is for like water, juices, stuff like that. Then 
let's talk about the spoons that would be used. You got the wooden spoon, classic stirring homemade cookies and discipline. And then you got the rubber spatula, basically the same thing, just easier to scrape the sides off. And when it comes to folding, really helpful. Then you also got the KitchenAid, which makes the cookies. It takes your arm and spoon out of the equation. The only thing you have to do with this is a, this one. Is to go in, scrape the sides, put it away, turn it on. We'll go through the attachments later. Now, mixing, you basically mix it. All right. Folding, you basically reach underneath, pick it up, and fold. And then you do that repeatedly until however long it says. Let's go through the attachments of the KitchenAid, shall we? We've got the paddle, basic mixer, the whisk, whisk, used for like meringues, stuff like that. Then the dough hook, breads, donuts, delicious pastries. Okay, different cutting techniques. Obviously we have the chopped, but you can also slice long ways for Julian. Cubed, which may be a little hard, but or diced, same thing. This would be a cube. Well, obviously it's not, but work with us. Um, Julian's thinner. Basically, you make it fry style. Now, obviously, I'm using the wrong knife for the job. Alright, Julian, chop, cubed, halved, quartered. That's basically it. What do you think? How exactly do you want to cut things? What's the right and wrong ways to cut things? Well, mainly we went through the wrong ways. The right way to cut mainly anything is use your knuckles as a guide, keep your fingers back. Alright, so when you're cutting, you're not playing chicken. See? And I suppose if you're gonna, you can go like that, but then you have to make two cuts. And then there, of course, is the angle cuts. You always use a cutting board so that you're not cutting on Mr. K's nice fine counters. Nice fine counter. All and, of them. Mm hmm. All of them. And always make sure you take the vegetable peeler with your produce to the garbage can when you peel them. Um. Hmm. Is there a specific way that you have to cut with a boning knife to get the smaller slabs of meat into smaller slabs of meat? But that's what your knife. Boning knife is more of like a steak knife. You know, you just take it, rip it through the meat, get to the, your desirable bite size, whichever, however big that might be, and then you take the fork, dip it in the sauce that you want. If you want any sauce, just take it in your mouth and eat it. Then eat it. But mainly, this is like a steak knife, I think. It's a butcher knife that takes stuff from this knife, the cleaver. You know, like if we had a shoulder or something, you would take the cleaver, just whack, whack, whack. Take it by another part, you know, chop it in half, whack, whack, whack. Take this, get along the bone line and whatnot, and there you go, you got meat. You know, you can get into tight corners, you know, carve it out and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's mainly about it. And this concludes our presentation. Have a good day. We'll see you back, maybe never, since I'm graduating.